So today we'll do something different. Before we get to the conversation, I want a moment with you. Uh, I want you to put your phones on aside. Before you do, don't forget to subscribe, uh, do the notification bell. We just found out that over 70% of you watch, but don't subscribe, and that's really important. But after that, put it on aside, and I want you to take an actual honest moment with yourself. And before I ask the guest, this time I'm asking you, at home, between your family, alone, on your phone, how are you really doing? You don't need to answer me, you don't need to answer anybody, but answer yourself. Take five seconds, close the lights, do what you need to do, and actually check in with yourself before we start the chapter. <laughs> I like that. That shows that you're a content creator or a videographer. <laughs> I always clap and it became a thing now. We don't use the, the what do you call that? Oh, that little slate. Yeah, I don't use that. Those it cool. looks cool. Yeah. Anyways, it's good to have you here. Thank you for having me here, man. Pleasure to meet you. Same. First time we meet each other on, this, on these two chairs, so that's cool. Yes, sir. And I actually reached the studio at the same moment, too. We got in the car at the same time. Yeah. That was the craziest thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the first question is an important one. It's, um, hi, Zach. How are you really doing? Hi. I'm doing really, really well right now. I've uh, been here in Dubai for the last four days, and it's been the first time in a long time that I've been able to really slow down. Hmm. And I'm just very grateful for where I'm at in my life. And the people I have in my life. Okay. So, yeah, I'm in a really good space right now. So that's why I was really excited for this conversation with you too. Same, man. I feel there's a lot of topics we can talk about, you know? And I feel to know a good space, which you say you're in, you need to go through a bad space mm -hmm. or a challenging space, you know? Otherwise, we don't know the difference. I think contrast is important. Absolutely. Mm. So a good space for you today is where you can slow down a bit. Is that accurate? Yeah, a good space. Yeah, it's mm. a good place good to people. be. good people. Good people and being present mm. versus trying to think too far ahead or obviously regrets of the past and just, yeah, I'm very in a good space. Okay. I'm a little nervous for this podcast because I never do podcasts. This is really? Like, like the first one in like forever that I've actually done. Really? Since I really started making videos. So. Well, thank you for giving me your thoughts today. Absolutely. And man. time. Yes. It's a pleasure today. I, I always think it's the best gift somebody can give you is their time. Because mm. it's your most expensive commodity or currency. It's the only thing you can't buy. <laughs> and, when it's, and it's finite. Yes. But we don't feel it's finite. We feel immortal, you know, but we're not. Then, so, and one day you get a phone call and uh, you know, a family member is gone and you're like, oh, when, how, like what happened? You know, they were young, for example, and you never feel it. And you get slapped by one death, but then you fast forward six months, you, you're again delusional about the finite idea, yes. and you get slapped again. It's like we're the, mo we're the most in denial creature when it comes to death. Why do you think that? It might be too harsh to comprehend every day that you're dying. Like, I, you know, like one nice stat is every second me and you are spending now, we yes. are one second closer to our death. It's funny. When you think of it. If you think of it like that, you appreciate these moments a little more. Correct. And, and there was this study, I think. I think it's about, about Myanmar, the country. And if I'm not mistaken, it's Myanmar. And they have five reminders of death per day. And they're considered one of the happiest nations. So it's, it's funny. When you know that death is, is a reminder, you start yes. to appreciate and not be, make it's a not big a fuss. Of hope conversation it yeah. should be more spoken about because then you That's appreciate shit more yeah you care about things you don't fuss about silly the little, things the little things that don't matter yeah okay so if you have a backpack sure 
And in this backpack, I tell you, Zach, throw in all the emotions that Zach is going through in this phase. And then I take the backpack and I open it. What do I find? Right now? Yeah, in this phase. I wear a backpack everywhere I go, so this is pretty on brand. Um, content. Not feeling the need to be something I'm not. Mm. Comfortable like my own skin. I don't know the adjective or verb for that. Uh, stressed. Mm. Grateful. And perfectionist to a fault. Interesting. Which Interesting me to combo. Be anxious. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes you stressed. Which makes you stressed. I can relate. And if I asked you, who are you, Zach? How would you describe yourself? I'm a person that's really good at starting something and catalyzing people to join along. Hmm. I'm not the best at finishing things, but I'm really good at starting something and getting people to join in. Hmm. That's, that's what I've learned over the last few years. It's an interesting skill. It's an interesting leadership skill and a trusting skill because people follow usually if they trust. If yes. they don't get the trusting energy, they won't follow. Hmm. And if I had to let you summarize Zach's childhood in three words. Oof. Um, normal. Mm. I feel like it's not three words, though. My parents just, like, always expected, like, perf perfect from me. Um, so maybe that's where my perfectionism is rooted in, mm. living up to their standard. And I was very loved, though. Loved, normal, that didn't really have any struggles in terms of growing up. I had a very, very good childhood. And hmm. Perfectionism. And your relationship with your parents, how was it? Now? Back then. It was great. It was great when I was growing up, when I was young. Yeah. Yeah. Both sides good? Mom and dad? Yeah. Okay. And my dad and my mom, just different relationships, obviously. Hmm. Mom's, she was a hairstylist turned teacher when me and my brother were seven and six years old. And my dad's always been a blue collar. Uh, never finished college, started a window and door business, salesperson, and worked really hard to provide for our family and always put us first. Mm. And he's always led by example, but never shown emotion. Mm. Maybe like two or three times. Or my mom's just wears her heart on her sleeve. Yeah. So they're like a yin and a yang, or just their opposites. And you have one brother? One brother, Drake. He's a year, he's 51 weeks younger than me. Uh, it's funny how you said 51 weeks. Okay. One week a year, we're the same age. That's why. <laughs> Interesting. And you're two? Two siblings? Yeah, just us two. And he lives in Berlin, Germany. I've never been. To Berlin? I've been to Germany, but I haven't been to Berlin. How do you like Germany? It's okay. I went there for work, but I heard Berlin has a great underground music scene, that's if, he, if that's what you like. You know? It's not his space, but that's what he's told me, that it's pretty, pretty wild out there for the music yeah. space. Okay, so stable childhood and all of that and good relationship with your kids, uh, with your parents. Now, if we fast forward now to your university, you're a person who was studying to be a doctor. Yeah. Then you switched to creating content for good, to help yeah. people. Yeah. What happened in 2020? So 2020, yeah. I started medical school in Sydney, Australia. But when I say 2020, it doesn't matter who's listening. Everyone went through something in 2020 mm -hmm. with COVID and the pandemic. And I moved to the other side of the world from Canada with a dream of being a doctor, um, but a dream of living in Australia permanently. That was like my end goal was to go to school there and practice there. Like a month into the program, COVID started. Then I tore my ACL. Um, and PCL, MCL, the whole thing. I needed oh, wow. surgery. 
And then two weeks later, I was in a, so I've been in a six year relationship up to that point with a girl from back home. And we broke up, which was like my happiness or like my identity at the time. Medical school was really challenging. It was all online. I didn't have any friends. I didn't really have any family. And it just got me to like a breaking point in my life. And I didn't have anyone to turn to because I also felt like, how could I complain? I have a, a few looking on the outside in, like my med school in Australia, like it's a good life. Everyone, a lot of people have it way worse than me. So that was when like my mental health really started to decline. And it felt like I was going deeper and deeper into like a dirt hole. And I didn't know how far down the dirt hole I was going to go. And if I was going to ever like be able to get out of that hole. And I was hyper aware of it, but I wasn't acting on it. Mm. And I was faking how I felt to like everybody, including I live with another classmate of mine. And I'd never wanted him to see. I always told myself, they don't let him see like your cry. Don't let him see your emotion. Like don't let them see. And that is not what I would wish anyone to do. <laughs> and that's not good advice, but that's how I felt at that time. Can we rewind? Sure. So dad is the old school dad, similar to my dad. Doesn't show emotions. Yeah. You know what's crazy? The other day, I was researching questions. And one question that I really liked was, especially to the guys, when was the last time you, hu you hugged your dad? I hug him often. But like he, his mom, my grandma, he, I don't think I've ever seen him say I love you to her. And she passed away like, two months ago when I was in London, England, and he FaceTimed me because she just got really sick last minute and I couldn't really say goodbye. And that was like one of the first times I've ever seen him show emotion. And I think that maybe changed a bit in him too. But yeah, that's what I meant when I was saying the first about, I've had time to like really like think about like, that's what stresses me out a lot is not being home or not being present in people's lives that mean a lot to me or my biggest fear in life is having a bad conversation and then something shitty or stupid happening and someone dying or something bad happening to me or my loved ones i don't want to ever leave a situation feeling like i was too busy or not nice hmm. i don't know why i have that fear it's never happened in terms of I, when I, last time i talked to my grandma but she she had dementia and she didn't really remember me anyways when she passed, so it was really sad, but I have good memories of her. I'm not trying to go on a tangent about my grandma. You can go wherever you want. Yeah. But that's where I've reflected a lot with like my dad's emotions or being similar to maybe your dad and being that strong figure. But I don't think his mom or dad ever said I love you to him. I never met yeah. my grandpa on his side. You know what's shocking, Zach, is when I posted that, so many women also commented. Like, some of them said never, some of them on his deathbed, some of them. And I was, my heart was breaking just reading the comments. Like, really? I got thousands of comments, both on, and I didn't expect it to be that sensitive. And some people are like, Anas, you're, 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 you're hurting me right. by remembering. And I'm, and it was meant, of course, to appreciate the ones that have them still alive. Yes. You know, because a lot of even the guests that I have, they regret a lot is the parents. Oh, I didn't, I wasn't good with them the last year and then they passed. And it's always a regret that stays with you. So when you just said that that's one of your fears, it's a very justified fear. Because you don't want to be too busy and then they are gone and you're like, shit, like I, I should have at least just messaged and said, hey, how are you today? Yes, 100%. You know, why did that topic tug at you? Because I don't think I really talk about it. Mm -hmm. I don't really talk about it to anyone in my life other than my partner back home for like 10 minutes after it happened and just internalized it further. Mm. So I haven't really had a chance to express because I've been too, quote unquote, busy and keeping myself busy to feel. Mm. But you feel a lot. We all do. You feel right? a lot because you also marinate it on your own. Yeah. You're not venting it out. Yeah, it's marinated, seasoned, cooked. 
all the feelings, and it's like a Panzerati. He's expanding. Mm -hmm. and he's got a. That's tough, man. It's tough then to be sometimes inside your head. It's almost hypocritical, man, because I, my whole platform is is showing like kindness, and it's okay to show emotion, and I believe that, and I I can see like people's like getting their weight off their shoulders, and I've experienced that myself, but I still challenge. My, it's still a challenge to me to this day to do that. What I know works. You know? I know very well. <laughs> I know very well. Somebody told me the other day we were, I think, in the car talking, and she said, uh, yeah, but why don't you express yourself it's asking me? And I said, no, no, like, don't get me wrong, I'm very good at talking, I'm very good at expressing myself, but I'm not that vulnerable. Although my show celebrates vulnerability, it's like you, it's an effort. Yes. And I think vulnerability is similar maybe to a muscle for people like us because you need to practice it and learn that, oh, I put my foot in the water and, oh, okay, it's safe. I can yep. put more, you know, and then suddenly you're, you're t taking a swim, but you're not going to suddenly s swim if you've had, I don't know, maybe in our childhood, or I don't know what it is. Did you tear, you said you, before this interview, that you tore your ACL, ACL too? Yeah. It's like trying to get out of bed after you tear it, right? You're not going to just go and jump on it. Yeah. You've got to slowly... Yeah. Progress to see what feels safe yeah. to you. And you know, I think I'm trying to also work. So today is your venting session. I'm here with yeah, you. Yeah, man, you're my therapist today, I guess. Sure. <laughs> An engineer, that's a therapist. Well, why not? <laughs> um, a doctor, that's a content creator. <laughs> Whatever. That's the world. That's the beauty. So um, very sheltered, safe, sweet childhood reaches all the way to Australia, gets slapped with COVID, gets slapped with the stress of medicine, big breakup with six years, ACL, PCL torn. For a sheltered, safe child growing up, this is a lot to take in one go, like when it rains, it pours kind of moment. And I think that is what traumatized you, not maybe your childhood. That was tough on you, and that was the birth of everything that followed after. Absolutely. Yeah. I think like so. They're both polar opposites. <laughs> yeah, it was too much, I think, on you in 2020. It's too much on a lot of people. Mm. And uh, I tried therapy. It didn't really work for me because it was online. It wasn't in person. And I was doing it in, like, the basement of the library between studying with other classmates. And then, like I said, I would probably cry and then wipe my tears and go back to studying and make sure, like, don't let them see how you feel. So my whole methodology of doing it was not right. I wasn't expressing. So mm. I also didn't want to be a burden to anybody. Mm. It's already stressful enough being there in med school to all my classmates. I didn't want to be that downer <laughs> and feel like, oh, here he comes back with his problems. I always wanted to be the person that made people feel good. Okay, I'm going to fuck with your head. Fuck with it. So it's funny how the common thread is you are so empathetic, and it's obvious today in your work, but it's from what your words. You're so empathetic that you don't want to be a burden on somebody. So you don't complain, not to mama, not to baba, not to brother, not to girlfriend, not to classmate, not to anybody. So you're like, no, I'll save them the burden. I can deal with it on my own. This is where I'm going to twist your head. Vulnerability in the right dose with the right person strengthens the relationship. So let's say me and you are buddies for two years and we're once on a camping trip and we're in the middle of the woods and you tell me Anas, I just want to tell you something I'm like what's up and you say you know what when I was 13 this happened to me and my best friend died because of a motorbike uh, accident or whatnot and that fucked me up and I couldn't have close friends after that and I always didn't want to lose another friend but I just want to tell you that you being here and me knowing you for two years it's one of the most refreshing things in my life. And you make me feel like I can have a good friend again. So you just used something so difficult to do, which is vulnerability. Now I love you more. 
Because Absolutely. he just made me feel special and made me feel appreciated. And I'm like, man, he told me something that's really doing. He lost somebody at 13. And he's been struggling with it. So vulnerability, if it's too early, too soon, it's weird. Like yes. you don't go to a cashier and they tell you, by the way, I was depressed yesterday. And you're like, excuse me? Hi, how are you? Yeah. Like it's weird. It's too early. But in the right time, it's so appreciated when your dad tells you something about his lost brother. And you're like, oh, you will never forget that story. Because it's your dad. He took a moment to tell you something that he was, or you see him crying because your grandmother passed away. You saw a moment of vulnerability. You were like, he has a heart. I love him. You know, like yeah. You feel it's the, you see a different side of them. So use that. That your vulnerability with the right person is never going to be a burden. Never. And if it's a burden, it's the wrong close person. So with my ex girlfriend, that was the one person that I felt that could be like my real self with. Mm. So when I lost that, I never showed my mom or dad the downsides or the bad sides because I didn't want them to think anything less of me. So when I lost that and I didn't really have any good friend at that time that I could connect with that was there, I didn't want to burden any friends back home because I wasn't speaking like that to them at that time. So I think I lost that mm. person. And yeah, that was just a really terrible yet beautiful time in my life. I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't go back and do anything different. I, if I could change it, I wouldn't change it for you as a friend. I appreciate it. I that. want you to go through that because the beauty that came out of that is unbelievable. I don't think today you or I, we, have, we do our helps in our different ways, mm -hmm. but none of us will ever realize how many people we're actually helping. We'll never, till we die. The ripple effect, you yeah, never it's know. Beauty. That's the but beauty. But sometimes thing. somebody pops up and is like, by the way, you changed my life. Yes. You know why? One, two, three. I'm like, okay, that's so nice to hear, but we will never know the effect. We just have to keep grinding and doing and helping. So that's the beauty. You took some poison and changed it into. My dad says, your mess is your message. Your mess is your message? I love that. It is nice. It didn't make sense at the time when he said it, but it did, it does in the last few years. Yeah, it's a nice one. I'll use it. How did you get out? Because I know you were uh, depressed, you were suicidal. Yes. How did you manage to, if you, com I don't know if you completely passed it, but to get out of it in your experience? I don't think I'm fully out of it hmm. first, but I don't, I'm not trying to get out of it. I believe it's all ebbs and flows now, and I'm okay with the tides. But how it happened, it was one, if you want to pin it on one moment, it was late one night and I wanted to feel. I didn't want to feel because my roommate was watching TV. So I went for a walk and I went down by like the Sydney Opera House, which is on the water, which is really nice. And I just sat there on the wet cement and I just started to cry because that was when I really questioned, like, what am I doing here in my life? Like, do I want to be here? Felt like a fuck up, felt like the worst that I've ever felt. And just, then two women came up when I was crying there. And I don't know why they're out at midnight in the rain. <laughs> I have no idea why they're out in the rain. And they just said, hey, how are you? And I said, I'm okay, I'm fine. They're like, what's going on? I said, no, no, I'm good. And then they just, for some reason, I was sitting up against the wall and they just, sat down next to me on the wet cement and just listened to me for 30 minutes. And I never seen them again. I never, I, now I'm sharing it here, but I, share, I try to share it more because I want to connect with them. But it felt so good to finally get something off my shoulders that was hurting me so deeply to strangers, like a cashier, like just to, to rain a person. I'm like, because I didn't know them, I had no judgment, I never gonna see him again. And that moment made me feel like it was okay to express myself. So that next day, actually, like I was, I talked to my dad for like two hours and told him actually how I felt and what was going on. And he's very level-headed, unlike my mom, who's, like I said, she's more emotional and like, I don't wanna burden her because she gets very worried and anxious. So I felt safer going to my dad from, him internalizing it. And that was the first stepping stone where I started to feel good again. So um, 
thanks to them. And I wouldn't have been probably vulnerable otherwise. I don't know how much farther down that hole I would have went, but I was in a really bad place and just very thankful for them. That was, yeah, like three years ago now. Hmm. We'll find them. Hopefully, this is the this is the one. We'll find them. Yeah, I don't remember their names either. That's the issue. Hmm. The power of a listening ear. It's very powerful, man. Humans want to be heard. You know, a lot of people warn me about introvert guests. And I am 0% worried about introverts because they're like, Anna's good luck. Your next guest is going to be an introvert. They never speak. I'm like, every human wants to speak. They just need to feel respected and heard. And the introvert interviews are probably the, one of the longest ones I've had. Really? Yeah, because every human, Zach, wants to speak. Absolutely. It's completely misguided that they don't want, oh, they're, they're, they don't like to speak. No, they don't like to speak to people maybe like you or people that are judging them. Yeah. Or No, but they're, they want to. You know, even introverts have friends. Yes, of course. So what are we, why are we alienating it? They're just more observant. They watch and they are selective where they right. spill. So I think it's so important. For you, why is, I know it's part of your messaging, is mental health. Yes. Why it's so important? Because I know it's important, obviously, in general, but for you personally, it's a mission. It's everything for why I ever started making any content. It was my therapy at the first, first and foremost. So that those women being that release point for me, I was not healed. I was not in a good place, but I felt something. I felt a little bit coming out of the hole. I felt a little alive. And I was like, I want to be that for someone else. One, to make them feel how I just felt there, but two, also selfishly, so I didn't feel alone hmm. in how I felt. So I blindfolded myself. I would go out with the sign before I didn't even make a video, I was just doing it. And it would say, if you struggle with mental health or you battle with mental health, hug me. Or if you're missing someone, hug me. I was struggling with mental health, I was missing my family, and all the, it just, it was, it was my cry for help, but it, people really resonated with it, and I loved it. And then I, my friend said, I can help you like film on like my iPhone. So he helped me when I was in Australia, and I posted a few videos, and it was crazy. This is, this is when I used to read comments, like, inter, like individual comments, and just seeing all ages and all different backgrounds or people messaging me of their mental health stories or everything they were going through. And if you looked at their profiles, you would think they're like picture perfect or pretty influencer girls or like dads that are just normal or it's universal, right? Mm -hmm. So that made me feel like I was doing something meaningful with my life. So I took a leap of faith. Um, and in September, so this is about doing that. I was doing this for like four or five months. And then in September or August of 2021 is when I put my medical school on a leave a hold, like on a hold. And I asked my parents, can I come back home to live in your basement to make TikTok videos <laughs> instead of pursuing medical school? Hmm. And even after expressing how I felt with them for that period of time, my biggest concern was how they were going to view me and how I was letting them down. More importantly, how I was letting myself down and not finishing something I started. Mm. But my parents, I was so lucky to have parents like that. All they wanted more than anything, what do parents want for their kids? What's number one? Safety, success. More than success. Safety, well-being. Health and happiness. Correct. They wanted me to be happy. Mm. And they saw I was like, the exact opposite of happy mm. so they welcomed it and when i moved back home i had no idea this was the fucking stupidest decision from like a life perspective like i had no i never thought i was able to monetize making videos i never thought i'd be able to make a living doing what i was doing i was going back to my small hometown putting something that i worked so hard for 
on the extreme back burner. And I felt so relieved going on that plane home. It just felt so good. Just, yeah, I, I, that's, in retrospect, it makes no sense, but in the moment it felt so right. Because it was, you finally aligned yourself with what you're doing. Uh, you're talking to a mechanical engineer that's today doing interviews. Yeah. But now I feel aligned. Yes. So it's not a job anymore. Not only is it not a job when you feel aligned like that, people's outside opinions of what the direction you're taking isn't going to bring you up or down. You're mm. on your path. And mm. that whole being depressed, suicidal, struggling with my mental health made me become self-aware and listening to my intuition where before I was not. And so that's probably the biggest reason I'm very grateful for that period of time because that made me being okay with looking stupid or not making sense because it felt right in my heart. And since I've done that, it's always worked out, whether it's in terms of a job or people or relationships or how I feel internally, it's all played out so beautifully and I'm just grateful. Uh, I love that you're a very honest person. You also said, I'm still in that hole, not fully out. Yeah. What are you doing to keep yourself from falling down? Not enough. Hmm. Staying busy, but need to be more present, like I was saying, how I felt the last few days. Yeah. And I should, I want to restart therapy, but a proper therapy in person. And I try to meditate, but I can't stick to it. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever tried it. I do it. Do you like it? Um, I found my way. I, this is, I think, what people need to learn in general in life. Which is the right way. Correct. My point is, we're in a world today where everybody wants a shortcut and everybody wants size-fits-all solution. It doesn't exist because we're unique human beings with unique needs and unique backgrounds, each of us. What works for me might not work for you, similar. So we know the logic of it. But we're quite weird that we know the logic of how unique we are, but then we want a one-size-fits-all solution. Yes. So you're like, yeah, if you do these three things, you're going to lose 20 pounds. I'm like, no, that body is different than this body. If you do these things, you'll have a great marriage. It's, you can't narrow down a marriage. It's like a seven-step wiki how. Relax. <laughs> you can maybe take two of the steps. Yes. So my point is, yes, I think meditation is great because it's a pause. Yes. Like prayer is a pause. Like if you sit by the bed and you pray before you sleep, it's a pause. Sure, we'll say, let's play on the pause idea. The pause idea is very good. Okay, how you want to pause? Like this, like this, like that. Whatever works. If you can pause and breathe and be calm, so you can say, okay, Zach, from today I talk to Anas, tomorrow, every day I do five minutes pausing. In whichever way you want. You want to sit on the toilet like this? And pause, do it. Maybe that's your meditation. Yeah. So I think that's where we overcomplicate it. Just breathe. Don't play with your phone. Like, don't stop the distraction. And take a moment for yourself. And that's why I think sometimes the shower moments come up with the best creative ideas. You're like, I yeah. should do that. And Absolutely. Because you just stopped distractions. So I do agree that, I, I do it sometimes in the ice bath. Like, literally, I try to meditate while I'm in the ice bath so the time goes. <laughs> But it works. So I think meditating is good. Prayer is good for many. Um, there's different ways. Walks. I think walks are great. Walk walks on me. I think I'm aware I need what I need to do. I just need to start building my own toolbox hmm. like I was before. And even then, once I have the toolbox, I don't think my life's going to be perfect. But I'll, I think I'll have the right tools or skills to combat them when they come up. But right now, I'm still in that process, which is crazy to think. But use one tool for now. You don't need the toolbox. Yes, one tool. Okay, well, I got to find my wrench first. Hmm? And then Anything. I get the rest. If it's like literally, okay, Anas, tomorrow you send me a WhatsApp, you're like, hey, I'm back home. Every day I'm doing a 10-minute walk. That's something. Yes. It's 10 Just minutes. Start. It actually makes you feel better. 
And as once a day, I text my mom, I text my dad a random quote or a random message or random, what? Well, that's a something. Whatever feeds our soul. And from listening to you, it seems by healing others, you are healing yourself. Yes. Which is pretty neat. It's been a, it's been a beautiful journey, man, like the last few years. So like I said, I moved back home in September of 2021 and I wanted to make videos. I was in med school and I didn't have a job. I had no money. So I couldn't hire a videographer. I had a friend I played basketball with in high school and he had a camera. He's never recorded a video. And he worked at the local shoe shop at our mall. And I told him my idea. And he said, Zach, like, I believe in you and what you want to do. I'll volunteer for six weeks for free. So he would, his name's Patrick Glass. Shout out to Patrick. <laughs> He would go to the shoe shop for a few hours, for three, four hours, do a shift or eight hours, whatever it was, and then he'd come film or he'd do it again every single day. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have to start. If it wasn't for my parents saying, come home, I wouldn't be making videos. If it wasn't for people, I'm, like I'm, it is not me, it is the people in my life that I'm so lucky to have is why I feel I'm in this position. If it's not for Erica, I wouldn't be here today. Um, my manager. Um, three days into making videos when I went home, I met my partner who I'm with right now for the last two, two and a half years, her name's Sophia. But I was holding a sign and she just came up. And I wasn't blindfolded and we just started talking. So we have the 4K footage mic'd up of the first time we ever actually like met, wow. which is unheard of. So a lot of things reaffirmed that I was on my right path. Um, like almost as soon as I got home was the videographer, uh, my partner, and then the videos just took off right away. Like they got like millions of views overnight. But it was because that was a time when the world really lacked connection and it wasn't just me. Mm. So the feeling I was feeling wasn't like alone. So that was the right time for the right message. And I was just expressing how I felt during that. Mm. So that's why. And then doing this for now, three, making videos for three years. So you did it and it was healing you and healing others. So it's a beautiful healing process because you're not only, it's not selfish, it's selfish and selfless. Mm -hmm. You know, it's beautiful. And I think we're all selfish creatures, but if our acts can be selfless, then you're winning. It's a two in one. Right. And, and it, when you're selfless, I feel like that's the most selfish thing you can do. Mm. And you don't feel that until you've done it. And that's what I kind of, hope when people watch my videos that it makes them want to do that small act that they can do and not just do it for a person but holy shit this made me feel better than anything I could have done for myself absolutely why do you keep doing it okay we know I did it in 2020 20 or 21 but mm -hmm. you keep doing it I mean it's the most fulfilling thing like it's 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 grown and evolved into something completely different than the hug but it's still the whole view is kindness connection love like um, how, how could I not? I get to wake up every single day and find incredibly kind people with stories and whether it's sharing their story, helping them, crowdfunding for them, helping with the business or giving other people online that view the videos as hope or whatever it's created, the ripple effect that we spoke on, like it's, I'm living my purpose hmm. and everyone's job is to serve others. And I'm doing it in my own weird, unique way of serving others at 31 right now, doing this. What do you think of social media? I don't watch a lot of social media. Hmm. But use it. I try to use it for good. Uh huh. And it can be a really negative, toxic place. But I think those same contagious feelings from that end of the spectrum is the same if we threw out positive or motivational or hopeful messages mm. um, that it can be just as contagious. So be mindful of what you consume and how long you consume. And um, if you're creating um, I hate the word authentic, like create authentic content. I try to create content that elicits enough of a positive emotion for people to want to actually take action in their life. Mm. 
Do you think, Zach, that people are born good? I think everyone's good. Everybody? I don't think one person's a bad person. You don't think somebody are born, some people are born evil? People make bad decisions or wrong decisions or make, yeah, or, yeah, I don't think anyone's born bad. Mm. And I, you know what I like about your content? I'm not very well versed in it, but I, I've seen, of course, and I love it and I get emotional watching it because very genuine, raw. I would say, and which is what we need. Um, and I do think the internet is full of shit and content that is designed to make people insecure to, for consumerism, for plastic surgeries, for brands. For, we can keep going on. It's a nice business machine for that. You know, you make people feel insecure, they're going to keep buying things yes. and whatnot. But I'm like, you know what? We need more people like us. If there is a lot of negative content, let's fight this war. It's okay. In everything in life, there is good and bad. But let's also make good content. Let's make wholesome content. Let's show pets. Let's show comedy. There's so many nice things you can yes. do. So I think there should be a balance. Like a social media is the tool. I can't tell you the amount of times that they've done. I've had news articles or journalists interview me, and they just say how nice it is to be doing something positive for once because it's so much easier for us to click a negative title or click the mm. clickbait, like the negativity. It just, yeah. And I believe people are inherently good and I get reminded of that every single day from what I do, not just from the people I meet. So we've been very fortunate. We've raised, I think over 6 million US dollars in the last 18 months. When I say we, the online community, but I go out I hear a story, let's say you own a, own a restaurant and you give me food for free that day and you tell me that there's a financial gap in your life and after you give me free food and you shows you're not just kind but you're also going through something mm. and then we'll crowdfund for you and we'll raise anywhere between 20,000 to a quarter of a million dollars overnight from the internet. And every time I do that, that is social proof that people want to do good because if Bob here sees the video, they watch the video, they click the link, they donate their money thinking it's going to this website, which is going to go to me, which is then going to go to you, which then you're going to use it right. Why would someone do that if they weren't a good person? Mm -hmm. um, and oftentimes people just donate anonymously. They don't even say their name. It's anonymous. Um, it reminds, it just reaffirms me that people are good. What about the people that think you're doing all of this for likes and views? What's your opinion? Um, I don't really get bogged down in that. Like I don't get bogged down in the praises either. Mm. Um, when I first started making videos and the first video had like 20 million views overnight, it's like a high, right? When a video goes viral for the first time as a creator, as a human. And I read every single comment and there's like a hundred positives and there's that one negative. And all the positives didn't really mean anything when there was the negative. As long as I know in person that I left you better off or the situation better off than I found it and the overall tone of the comment section is positive, I don't really care. Yeah. Um, I'm already on to the next thing or thinking about the actual person in real life. And in my heart, I know I'm doing what I feel is right, I'm learning each and every day of how to refine that or um, shape that in a more um, better way. But I've never, like I said, when I moved back home, I had no intention of making money, no intention of growing a following. I don't view myself as an influencer. I think I make videos that I hope elicit a positive message to create change and that's it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't like that view of me, so. Um, yeah, don't really. And it's, it's the right approach because you can't expect everybody to clap. That's delusional also, <coughs> you know? So if we have some spice and neg of negativity, that means we're doing something right. Absolutely. Yeah, it's normal. Um, is there like a story that, because you've heard so many human stories and cases, is there any, I'm sure you get this question, but is there any that really stuck in your head? There's two. Ah, okay, tell me. So the first time we ever crowdfunded for someone, 
It was April of 2022, Harlem, New York. His name was Michael. And it was an older gentleman, probably like in his early 60s. And he was in a wheelchair and he was hysterically crying. And he's just like, anybody help me? Can someone help me? And I was just standing on the other side of the street and noticing that people were walking by him like he was air. So I just went over there and said, what's going on? And he said, my rent's due tomorrow. It's 195 bucks. And if I don't pay it, then I'm going to be like evicted and kicked out on the streets and I don't have any family. And long story short, um, I asked him if he had a quarter for the bus. And he gave me his last quarter out of his Dairy Queen cup. And I gave him 500 bucks and it was an emotional reaction. And I made it, I was like, oh, we have to like, do something more than just the 500 bucks. This isn't, we can like maybe help him. So I started a GoFundMe for the first time ever. And in 45 minutes, we raised $9,000. And I was like, holy smokes, like this is gonna like take off. So I put up a story on my Instagram said, anybody from 127th Street in Harlem, New York, that's free at 9 a.m. tomorrow, meet me outside the US Postal Office because I told them I'd meet them back the next day with maybe another surprise. Seven different people from like all different walks of life showed up from the same block that he's from. Someone that was a manager of a bank, someone that owned a hair, hair salon, someone that was like a manager of a grocery store, someone who had like the Times Square billboards. Long story short, we raised $100,000 for Michael in like oh, less than, I don't know, the time period when we saw him next. And at that moment, I felt so good in my heart of what I felt that I catalyzed but that wasn't the message or the, the lesson that I learned. When, he, when the video was done and the lights went off, Michael tapped my elbow and he's like, Zach, I just wanna say thank you for like all the money you've raised and put this together. Like it's changed my life. But I haven't had a friend in nine years and now I have seven people I can call a friend, thank you. That was the moment that I realized it was about the connection, not about the money. Because of that quarter he gave me, he then now lives with his son that he didn't see in three years and lives with his grandchildren that he never met before because of a fucking quarter. And that was, and I still keep up to him to this day. This was like two and a, two and a half years ago. And that was how I learned it was doing way more, it was way more than the money. The money's, it can get you from A to B, but that's not what the message was. And he really, like that changed everything for me for moving forward. So that's the first story. Hmm. You got any thoughts on that story? I watched it, it was one of your pinned videos. Michael. Yeah. I saw it, it was beautiful. Yeah. Okay. And that's not even in the video, the message. And your message is absolutely right. And I'll tell you a funny thing that literally three hours ago, I was sitting having ice cream with my mom and we were talking about uh, different topics. She, I love having my deep talks with her. She has a great mind. And I said, uh, you know, mama, money is never enough alone for happiness. So if I give you now $100,000, but the condition is you'll never have peace of mind, you're like, fuck it, I don't want it. If I tell you I'll give you $10 million right now, and you live till you die alone, you're like, Anas, fuck your money. Mm. It's not enough. Is it's it not. important? Sure. Yes. yes, you can take care of your friends, your family, you buy something for everybody, you, you help people, absolutely. But it's alone, never, never dare associate money with happiness alone. You need it to make you happier. But you need something to make you happy already, which is what you said. Connection, people, love. On that note, when I first started making videos, the first month I made a like month of making videos, I remember I posted them on YouTube and I didn't know I it was gonna monetize. And I got an email saying I was in a pizza shop two hours away from my house with my videographer, and I showed him the email. I'm like, we just got paid from YouTube. He's like, How much? I'm like, we just got paid $647. And that happiness, I've never been happier than I, then than I am now. It felt like if I could make minimum wage doing something I love, I would be like a spring fucking chicken. Like it just felt so good. I'm doing something that's gonna hopefully let us stay afloat. Mm. And it's helping people, it's helping up. We're feeling good. We're helping, we're feeling, helping ourselves and we're enough to like pay the bills. And that, that was, um, a great feeling that I wasn't chasing money, but just I remember like how great that 647 bucks felt. Um, but the other story I wanted to share, sorry, um, 
you made me think about it because you said about the idea that we'll never know like the impact that we have. Mm. And that sometimes when we hear stories, like it's great and it fuels us. So one that really sticks with me was that first summer making video, going about a year into making videos, I was at a water park where we brought a hundred kids from the local housing projects to a water park with like three chaperones. Terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> but when I was there, a dad with his three daughters came up to me and they were like 10, eight and six. And the six year old girl in her six year old English came up to me and she's like, we watch your videos like every single night before bed, like your, my dad shows us them. And she's like, last week we were watching one of your videos and then we went to the grocery store the next day. And there was a guy that looked like he was like, she said this in six year old English, that he was struggling. So I went home that night and I took my piggy bank and I broke it and cracked it because I said to my dad, I want to do what the guy in the video does. So to know that and then she went back the next day, he was still there and she helped her with her piggy bank change. So she helped him, the workers saw it, the dad, the daughters, the, the cu other customers, like to know that it has a real world ripple effect in piggy bank to any age, like that makes me feel like, like one, I'll never know, and two, it's actually creating meaningful change. And then mm. I hear stories like that to this day, but that was the first time I ever heard it. I'm like a six year old and that was really awesome. So that really also instilled that I felt, I mean, that made me feel good. That made me, I don't allow myself to feel good, but that made me feel good. Yeah, that is nice. Funny you said, I don't allow myself to feel good, why? Because I never feel like I'm doing enough. And it goes back into like that perfectionism mm. and growing up, like my brother, he's a year younger. We don't really have a good relationship, um, even to this day. Mm and always feeling like I needed to be something, whether it was who I am or who I'm not. But even when I'm on my right path and feeling purposeful, I always feel like I can do more. But I'm really working on that um, the last few years, especially um, yeah. Why I don't really know where I'm going with that train of thought. Why is the relationship not good? Um, we live on opposite sides of the world, but that's an excuse. Hmm. No effort hmm. from either side. There's a lot of like built up like tension or resentment just from not being close growing up or being hyper competitive with like similar things we like, but I was always like the older brother, but not really older because it's like we're pretty much the same age. And yeah. So not something I usually actually talk about. So I love them, but I don't have a really good relationship with them, the relationship that I wish I had. Hmm. And I share that to him from time to time, but nothing really changes. So I've just out of sight, out of mind. But I wish it wasn't. What would you wish for it to be, realistically? I don't think he'd be like my best friend, mm. but I just wish he knew I was proud of him and I love him and he inspires me because when he was 18, he took like an untraditional path into his life with like going to computer science and then moving overseas and just listening to his intuition early on. Mm. And I really admire that about him. And I've told him that, um, but I don't know if he, believes it when I say it. And he, I don't know if he just thinks it's words. Hmm. I wish he really knew I meant that. Well, you did what you can do, which is share it. Yes. How it is received is not in your control. Easier said than done sometimes, but you're right. <laughs> hmm. So that's the soft spot. One of them, yeah. Hmm. 
How can it be better now? What can you do? Is there anything you can do or it's done? I think what you said earlier about us going on like, what was a camping trip after a relationship of two years, hmm. continuing to be comfortable having that vulnerable conversation, maybe it breaks in the, the third time or fourth time, but being okay with that every once in a while when I do see him. I, saw him a few months ago or a month ago and I didn't have anything like that conversation with him which mm -hmm. I regret that I didn't but re revisiting that and doing that I think that's why you should do that kids. again let's do the healing by healing right yep if you approach your brother the same way you approach your work which is <coughs> which is okay I'm going to text him once a week. I'll tell him a few sentences of what I've done and I'll ask about him. He doesn't reply, he doesn't reply. Right. I'll do it the next week too. I'll do it the third week too. Sometimes also some people are skeptical because if you try it once, they're like, yeah, he feels guilty, blah, 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 just because he's successful, he's messaging me. They're, they're skeptics. It's normal. It's a defense mechanism and they want to challenge it. But if you're going to do it for six months, it shows. It's genuine. <laughs> or I'm crazy. You know? So, and <laughs> you're yeah, a perfectionist. No. So. Yeah. Oh, you're, but he's, you're his brother. It's a bit yeah. different. If you do it to a girl that you're chasing, you're definitely crazy. <laughs> but <laughs> if it's a brother, it's a bit different. No, but so. I, I think you're right. I will take you it's up. It's a gesture, man. Up. And I truly believe to every heart, there is a key. To every heart in the world. Your heart, my heart, we can be the stones with most people. There's that one person, one key from time to time, cracks it. And you're like, shit. That was it. Yeah, it's timing sometimes. Even sometimes yes. the same beautiful message that you sent him in the wrong time, he'll, he'll time block you. Six months later, he thinks it's the most beautiful message you've ever sent. Right. So we do our part. Heal, heal yourself by healing, also by giving love to somebody. I'm sure deep down, his blood is your blood and he wants to be a good brother, but... God knows what happened in his brain and how he thinks about you guys. And but how it's received is not on me. Yeah, you do your, you do you. And then you know that in this life, you did your part. And that's literally all you could do. You don't die regretting. Right. Like I did. I showed love. I was generous. I was nice. I checked on people. Yes. Now, who doesn't want to receive it? They don't want to receive it. It's okay. We have to try to be at peace with that. Of course, it's nice if they respond and reciprocate, of course. And sometimes it happens, you know. Hmm. What about love? What about it? How is love in your life? Are you in love? Is it healing you? Do you like love? Yeah, I love love. Hmm. I'm in love. Okay. My partner, we've been dating for almost two years now, a little over two years. You never released the video? No. Oh, I want to see it. You want, you want to see the video? I, I can show you the video after if you want please, to see it, but I haven't yeah. released it. Okay, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, I think it's amazing. It'll be a great like wedding piece one day. Absolutely. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Did you just propose online? <laughs> 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 Sorry. Um, do you believe in love at first sight? No. Mm -hmm. So attraction? Yeah. Okay, and what is love to Zach today? What defines it for you? Like, like a partner or, or a person? Yeah. Love when you're with a partner. What, what do you think that is? What is love? Someone who compliments you, mm -hmm. um, someone who supports you, and someone who has, like some of the best relationships I've seen are people that are like almost opposites, but like have the same goals or uh, traits. Hmm. Not traits, but like viewpoint or visions in their life. But like my mom and dad are happily married for the last 30 something years. And I couldn't see them being more opposite in terms of <laughs> the way they view a situation. Mm, but they complement each other. But they complement each other because then it's a full circle, like a different viewpoint, which is very important. Hmm. Um, so she's <coughs> very opposite of me in terms of that. I wasn't coughing because of anything other than being sick. Hmm. But. Uh, no, she's, yeah, she's, what's love? That's a great question. What's love to you? 
I've heard a lot of definitions and I've came, come up with my mix. I feel it's a chemistry, which is one of the easier ones. You know, it could be sense of humor chemistry. It could be physical attraction, like a mix of chemistries, right? You need good yep. chemistries. Um, but then you need respect and trust. Mm. And those don't come easily. That's why I don't believe in love at first sight. Yeah. Because you can't bump into somebody in some market, but I trust you and I respect you. But you, don't, <laughs> you, you don't know me. Yeah. So it takes time. Vulnerability is earned. Trust is earned. Respect is earned. So I think those are important. And then when you add the attraction, the chemistry, you have, I, I think, love. I have a similar ethos to you then. Yeah. I view it the same way. And I think good love is more selfless than selfish. That's good love. If it's more selfish than selfish, selfless, selfish more than selfless. You want to be more selfless. Yeah. A good love has more portion of selflessness than selfishness. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Because you notice a lot of toxic relationships where the selfishness is beyond. It's ego, it's possessiveness. Then you know the selfishness is higher. But if it's uh, not even 50 50, I would say like 60 70 yeah, 60 40, maybe at yeah. least, then you know you're healthy. Yes. Because you look after her. She even looks after you? Yeah. But you're not looking after each other thinking, oh, she's going to look after me. You're just, you're just doing it because that's what love love is. Yeah. We, we came up with a nice mix. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Do you have the red card? I have some more questions on the, oh, and the card game. These are qu quicker ones. I okay. need card game bad. No, so you're awesome at what you do, by the way. Thanks, man. You make I love me very it. natural, so I appreciate you, man. Really. Me too. I enjoy this a lot. I enjoy getting to know people, and the idea was always to get to know the human behind the title. <laughs> and that's why you see, I won't ask you too much about your career or your degrees. I want to know you. Who's this person that's doing all of this? Why? You know. And a lot of the questions you asked, I, I pause and my answers are stuttered because they're not questions that I often get asked. So mm. thank you for being different and asking real human questions. Well, this is a different one now. Oh, shit. Okay. What is your weirdest dream? What? What is my weirdest dream? Yeah. Do you have like a weird dream? What's my weirdest dream? Something you dreamt even maybe as a kid or a repetitive one. Can we come back to that question? Of course. Okay. What is an unforgivable action to you? I think we can forgive everyone for anything. Anything? Yeah. Doesn't mean I'm gonna not learn from it or not wanna not be with that person. Like if, God forbid, someone kill my parents or kill my brother, I hope one day I would find it in my heart. Like that's the worst thing I could think of, that I could forgive them and not have any hate or hurt in my heart because that just carries over. Mm. It doesn't mean it wouldn't change me forever or I'd be set, like devastated or be really upset in that time, but I would hope one day that I could forgive them. Mm. Okay. So I don't think there's anything. If social media disappeared, who would you be? Former medical student turned cashier. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I never, I never once thought of that. Mm. I just always believed that it was going to somehow work or turn into something that would be purposeful, that would allow me to live. I don't know. You have this intrinsic need to help. It's mm -hmm. in you. It's like in your veins. It's not like, oh, I'm going to try it for a year. No, like it's in you. Yeah. So it's, I think it will always be something there, whether it's philanthropic work, whether it's volunteering, whether it's being a teacher. You know what I mean? It goes there somewhere. Absolutely. I think that's where you would find yourself. And it will pivot and evolve into something else or different and grow, but I'm not concerned. Um, yeah, I like that. Um, if you could, Zach, teach every child in the world only one lesson, what would you teach them? Everyone is going through something just because someone appears happy or appears sad. To always lead with kindness 
And that small gesture of you being kind can go a much longer way than you probably know mm. when you're younger. Nice. This is an interesting one. Would you rather lose all your memories or never be able to make new ones? I'd rather lose all my memories. Really? And you start fresh? Yeah. Okay. Because we're only right now anyways. Hmm? Being present. You're one of the few that answered it this way. How do you view it? It's a tricky one. It's not easy. Look, if you're young, I would... I think it's easy to say, ah, I'll, you know, I'll format my memory and start afresh. If you've lived, like you talk to a 65-year-old and they think, I've experienced some beautiful memories with my kids, blah, blah, blah. I don't think they'd ever want to erase all of that and start mm. new. It would not be nice to not know your kids or... Right. I don't have any kids yet. I'm yeah. not married yet. Yeah. Maybe in like five to seven years, I'll have a different answer. And because you feel you have so much more to give also, I think. That's where my answer was rooted in. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is one thing that society has lost that you wish we could get back? Lost. I would say since COVID, lost being human, lost connection. Mm. I think it was there for a year, year and a half when everyone was feeling these things, but now we've just turned a blind eye to it mm. back to our, our norm, new normal. Yeah. I wish people were more empathetic and really connected. Why do you think people are not so empathetic anymore? It's like the health scare, right? Six months, if you get, if you get, a, if you get a health scare, you all, all you're concerned about is health is the only thing that matters. And then you go forward six months later and you put a blind eye to it because we get caught up in our own lives, mm. caught up in busyness of life. But um, mm. we can, I said, People aren't bad people, but humans can be selfish. No, we're a selfish and there's creature. Nothing, there's nothing wrong with being selfish to a certain extent. I think there's I think healthy it, selfishness and there's 100%. very bad selfishness. But it's about playing at that at that fine line. Yeah. I, I, was to, I did two videos also with Hamid the other day just about narcissism. Mm. I think it's way higher than before. Like if we compare... It's an assumption. But if we compare narcissism to maybe 200 years ago, oh. it's crazy. And I'll do this also. Anybody watching, I'm going to ask them. I always ask people, show me your iPhone background picture. If it's a picture of you, no comment. <laughs> Let's see what I have my iPhone. You know? Like, I think it's weird when somebody puts a beautiful... Okay. You can <laughs> it's, show them. It's nothing. It's your default. My, but it used to be Kobe. People... But... Uh, Kobe, yeah. God rest his soul. But people, I've noticed so many people have a picture of them. Their and face. That's not normal. Okay, you and your mom, <coughs> sure. Yes, a memory you're, of. You're fine. Yes. Great picture. You posing, and I'm like, wow, like, did we reach this? That we're that self obsessed because of the selfie? And the selfie social, has created this because media. you keep looking. It's like we're looking at a mirror all day. Yes. You start to fall in love maybe with that image. So that's, I think, was, and the filters, and, and, and they make you a bit more polished, so people are hooked to it. It's scary. I think they become more obsessed, but I don't think they love themselves more. 100%. And narcissism is not based in health. Narcissism is a negative emotion. It's insecurity. Right. If it was healthy, it wouldn't, and it's a spectrum, of course. Everybody is narcissistic to a certain level, and we read about this. The healthy one is self-love and confidence and fighting for your rights and fighting for your opinion. That's the healthy narcissist. But it easily can go beyond, you know, abusive and not accepting anybody's opinion and you're above everything, self-centeredness. And there's so much of that. But like you said, it has nothing to do with, it's not a good thing. Right. A, a comfortable person is not, not if you're confident, it's yes. kind of the opposite of a narcissist. Yes. Because I can tell you, ah, oh, your show is shit. And you're like, okay, your opinion on this. But if I hit something and now you hit back, your ego's fighting. Now yep. it's not so positive. 100%. You know? Back to that question that you skipped. Do you remember any weird dreams? Weird dreams. <sighs> nothing? I got nothing for you, man. It's okay. <laughs> it's a weird question. It's a good question. 
Sometimes you get weird. <laughs> I can imagine you get some weird ones. Yeah. Okay, so this is this... the card game I'm going to give you. A piece you can play with your family, with your partner. Oh. With your brother one day. Please, be, join the table. I'll come. Deal. <laughs> we all go and play. He's never been to Dubai, so I'll bring really? him to Dubai one time. Okay, that's the invite. Okay, so one, you mix it more. Okay. One we will do for you and one for the audience. Okay. We, ne- we need to involve them. Okay. You can't be the only ones having fun. So I'll get yours. Okay. Okay, I like this. So for you, I'm going to ask you the question and then you throw this and it's the way you to answer, how to answer. Okay. So the question is, what is the thing that you are most proud of in your life right now? Throw. Be open. Okay, so what is the thing you are most proud of in your life right now? Right now, mm. sharing to you about my brother. Okay. I'm happy that you did. It felt really good to share it. And you gave me some really sound advice, too. So mm. grateful. You know, he has a heart, too. I know. So We all do. Like I said, there's a key. And I, you know what? I, I said this to my son. Last year, my son had a really difficult teacher, like really difficult. And he was complaining, obviously. He's like, Baba, this and that. She, you know, she is always just looking to catch me on something and, and it's unfair and I am mistreated. And the stories he was telling me, he was mistreated, to be fair. And he's a quite fair boy. And I told him, uh, Habibi means my love. So I'm like, Habibi, look at it as a challenge of learning social skills. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a key. And if you start developing your social skills, you're going to lead a great life because you'll you'll not always have easy people to crack. Of course. You'll have really hard. And in your field and mine, we know. We meet all kinds of shapes. And he did. So every day at the end of this class, he'd stay two minutes extra. He's like, hey, I just want to say, you know, thank you. I don't know what he did, but in his way. And he showed initiative and he showed care. And she really warmed up to him after a while. And I said, you see, I'm very proud. You found some way. So I say the same to you, Zach, as a brother. Your brother has a heart. There is a key. Maybe it takes 10 years. Maybe it takes six months. Maybe it never happens. But you do you your part. Yes. Don't sit and say, I'm upset. It's not happening. Of course it's not happening. No, there's no movement. Continue to make movement. You move. Something happens. You, know, oh, you send a beautiful birthday <laughs> gift to him, a thoughtful card. No heart is that harsh. Even yeah. if he smiles without sending you a message, he smiled. Yeah. He smiled in his corner. You made That's him fine. happy. Yeah. Long and you feel good. You wrote a beautiful message. Yes. So, thank you for the answer. Okay. One right. for the audience. Choose whatever you want. Okay. Go with this one. Okay. Do you believe in love at first sight? <laughs> <laughs> so put this here and here. In the comments. So you said no. I'm interested to see what the comments are. Yeah, let's see what they think. So, um, yeah, this card game took us a while, man. It took us two years to do, but I love how many families gather and just play and talk. Because there's deep questions. And a lot of people are like, shit, we've never asked these questions to our parents or to our partners. So I'm happy about it. I'm excited to play it. Yeah, it's nice. If you're in ever a boring setting, it will change it completely. (laughs) Completely. Okay. What is, Zach, a personal failure or mistake that you find it hard to forgive yourself for? Um, I guess when I was 18, I failed out of university. And that was like really what rooted me to want to like do well in school and to like 
flip the script and like from failing out of college, university to going to med school, I was like, that's complete different ends of the spectrum. But I don't wish I did that. Like using extrinsic motivation as fuel will get you to your goal, but maybe that's not the goal that was meant for you. Hmm. So I wish I would have maybe listened to a little bit more of why I failed or what I actually wanted to do versus how can I prove people wrong or mm. make people proud when deep down they don't really care. It's just they want you to be happy. So I wish I would have viewed that failure differently. Mm. What's the best moment in your life so far? Best moment in my life? Or one of? Uh, a lot of really amazing moments, man. What pops? It would have been going back home for the first time after like not seeing my family for two years. Wow, that's a gap. Two yeah. years, why? Yeah, well, when I was in Australia in med school, yeah, 20, 20, 20, 2021. Uh -huh. No flights and all of that? Yeah, I was all studying too, right? So and you couldn't go home. So seeing my family and having that relief of having their support, meeting my partner, meeting my manager, Erica, like in the relationship that we built, um, but moments. Um, it's like, I love it and hate it at the same time, but when my entire family, like my, my parents, my brother, and like my partner and just like our small family is all together. Now it's so meaningful because we don't spend time together, mm -hmm. but it's also the worst because it's like, I don't feel it's, it's, it's good. I appreciate it so much, but I don't feel like it's good. Why? Because the relationship isn't great because I've stopped taking action and stopped moving it forward from my end. So maybe that's like a selfish guilt. Mm. Well, it does take two to tango. Takes two to My tango, point but is, even if you do your move, yeah, but that's where it stops for you. Yeah, the other person, whether they reciprocate or not, they have to tango also. So yeah. that's all you can you can control. You create the setting. I'm I'm a big uh, advocate of family gatherings. Mm. Our Sundays are family, like every lunch, every, and that's sometimes awesome. we adjust our uh, travel dates. Yep. So that we're here on Sundays. That's amazing that you prioritize that. I love that. I'm, I'm quite strict on it also with my kids. That you Do they know, understand like, oh, yet? Not fully. They love it. Yeah. But because when you're a kid, you're like, you have a baba, they're playing today, and blah, I want to go. I'm like, no. You come first, you leave after. Because I know this is the investment that will have a ROI later. Mm. Later, when you're sick, those are the people that are going to be there for you. When you need love, you need somebody to be there for you. You need that. We can't also, we're not lone creatures. No. And you need people to have your back in those moments, you know? Otherwise, it's very lonely. How many, you meet a lot of people in the streets. How many of them are actually lonely? No family, nothing. The large majority. So we need to invest in this. Especially if you have it, to be grateful for it and to pursue it mm. and be active in it because a lot of people don't. Like, if I didn't have family or people to fall back on or, like, like, I don't, you, like, people that get in unhoused or homeless, it's like, okay, you have no support, so you go to drugs or alcohol, and then you're addicted, and then you're on the streets. Like, it's not that far-fetched that people can go down that route mm. fast if you don't have support. So if you have support, you're very, very, very lucky because it can stop you from going down a slippery slope. So. I agree a lot. Yeah, and, 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 this one, and the ones for, we have it, like it's very uh, um, interesting, and I don't mean it with any grudge or anything, but when I compare my father and my mother, mm -hmm. my father is a lovely man, but he doesn't invest in maybe the quality time with us. He's just a father that really worked hard, supported us and all of that. So I, I appreciate that, old school dad. My mother, on the other hand, invested so much in talks, in let's go for a ride, Let's talk about life. A lot of love, a lot of physical touch and hugs. Mm. And, and I always call her the glue. She's the glue of the family. She keeps us together as men because we're all boys. And it's so interesting to see 
how lucky we are to have this unit. We don't have jealousy in between, don't have grudges. And it comes not for free. There was something. Somebody was investing, 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 and then you have a rich relationship. Right. All of us have fathers and mothers. Doesn't mean it's a rich relationship mm -hmm. by default just because he's your dad. Nope. Time. So it's really interesting. And that's why I'm strict on the Sundays. That's why I'm asking you to do rituals. It could be once a year. It could yeah. be Thanksgiving. It could be whatever. It could be, it's a ritual. It's something. A weekly call, a weekly message, whatever. It has a ROI, you know, big time. I fully agree with that. Hmm. What is uh, the best advice you've ever received? People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Again, people? People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Hmm. Who said that? Baba. Nice. He's good. I gave you two nice ones. He's your a... mess is your message too, right? Yep. He's a goat. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting, man. What is the most hurtful thing somebody has told you and you can't forget it? Funny how when you ask me these vulnerable questions, we just put up these like fences in our head or brain where we just don't want to go into those thoughts mm -hmm. or speak it aloud. What's the most hurtful thing someone's ever said to me? Mm. They don't love me. Hmm. Who? Can you share? Sure. My ex. Hmm. That makes the heart sink, yeah? Yeah. Hmm. But if it is the truth, then it's good to hear it, even if it hurts. Absolutely. At the time, I still loved her. I didn't really let that feeling process as long as she did before. Hmm. So it was hard, especially humans we want to well, at least me out fix problems and when you're on the other side of the world you can't see the person or you can't be in a time zone you can't fix a problem even if there wasn't a problem fix it's just that chapter with that person is over mm. so it was a blessing and a curse at the same time it's a lot of grief also yeah one of the guests i had she has a crazy story about similar and she said she, I'll summarize it. She was at dinner with the guy she was in love with and he said something so harsh. And she said, Enes, I could hear my heart break inside of my body. I could hear it while he was saying those words. That was bad, man. Just to hear her story. Yeah. What, what did he say? Something along the lines. I need to find the clip for you because I don't want to misquote. But Some, somewhere along the lines that no matter what you do, I will never marry you. Something along that. Like, it doesn't matter. You are never yeah. going to be kind of my standard for a wife. And imagine, like, being, you know, dressed up and pretty and you're out yep. on a date and you hear that in public. And not trying to... She, she tried to keep it. Yeah, to keep like, inside, I was... Shattered. It was, that I don't forget that story. Um, you t you have a formula for vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Can you share it? Sure. Yeah. Vulnerability equals relatability equals empowerment. When we're vulnerable, we can relate. When we relate, we can empower. It's a very good formula. Vulnerability equals relatability. Relatability equals empowerment. It's so true because when you're vulnerable, you realize you're not alone. Mm -hmm. You can say, oh, ACL, ACL. Oh, really? Oh, suddenly we are, we have something in common. Oh, you know how messed up I was depressed. You were depressed. Oh, really? Yes. And my moment of loneliness was post my ACL because nobody would understand what I'm going through. When did you do that? Maybe 2004. 
a while ago. A while. And football. How did you do yours? Basketball. No contact. You? No. My, this guy came and tackled me in my knee. And my cleats were already fixed. On the, I was running, so this leg was up, this leg was down, fixed, and he hit me here. And I could feel my knee go, like, and then it started yeah. to pop after. Tot, 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 tot. But after it. What was the hardest part of that? One yeah. that I didn't know what the fuck was a knee injury. I really didn't know. I wasn't educated. The social media wasn't big, and I didn't know right. there's something called ACL, and if it rips. I don't know anything. I'm like, oh, what's wrong? When Let me sore. go play. And I go back to play, and it starts to pop. Yeah, it's unstable. It's dripping, like all the tendons were. So it was a very weird pain. You know, it's an icky inside your bone pain. But I'm not talking about, I'm talking about the six months that, or eight months that pass after, where you're not doing your sport, you're not going out. Not everybody gets it. I couldn't sleep because of the bone pain. Mm -hmm. So I found a forum. Okay. I remember it was something, blah, 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 knee forum. I found it, I think it was Alta Vista search engine, not even Google back then. So I'm like, I was stuck in a room because I couldn't go up the stairs. I was stuck on the room on the ground floor at my dad's house. So I have my desktop there. And I searched because I would not, I'm so sleepy, but I can't sleep. Yeah. My body's in pain. My painkillers are not working. So every day, I'm so, I, I remember sitting outside, like yanking my hair. I'm like, I'm fucking tired. I want to sleep, but I just can't. And at night, pain goes like triple always. Oh, I yeah. don't know why. Anyways, so I find this forum. I'm like, okay. So I type, da -da -da -da, guys, you know, this is happening. And then all of these other people with knee surgeries are talking to me. And I'm like, this, is, this feels great because Absolutely. somebody relates. To your so you're not alone. Vulnerability yeah. equals relatability. And now I feel good. I feel empowered. Did you ever go back to that forum? If you, no. you, you could you find your username and password to go check out what I you said? I don't know. That's a long time ago. But that was, I think, one of the moments of realizing, like you have in your life in different moments, how important, like one of my key messages in AB Talks, one of the best compliments somebody saying in the comments, I thought I was alone. After watching this interview, I realized I wasn't. A, that always hits me because Absolutely. I know how it feels. Absolutely. I had a lady... Uh, from the UK, um, she came on, she was so brave. She came and she talked about a condition she had called vaginismus. I'm like, what is vaginismus? So I'm being educated by her. Mm -hmm. And she said, it's when your vagina clenches and it's like because of trauma, you can't have sex. It's painful, like torturing. Pain. Wow. And I never knew that there's anything that all of your muscles contract. contract because of trauma. It could be anything, you know, back... And she's like, I, she had a very, in her marriage, and she's like, I'm having a hard time. I can't have sex with my husband. And now he thinks I don't want it. Like, it's all these challenges that come, it can cause divorce. And you feel insecure now as a woman. The guy feels insecure as a man because he's not pleasing. So I never right. knew all of this. And she tells me this, tells me the story. She's like, one day I go on Google and I write, da 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 is happening to me. Mm. And then she goes, the search gives me a word, vaginismus. And she's like, I start crying. Because I realize it's actually labeled, I'm not alone. All Up until that point, she thought she was the only one that's yeah, ever. Like something's wrong with her. Wow. But then you realize it's a condition. And then she went to help and now she has kids and it's a beautiful story now. But it's crazy how people, so when they look at your content, or my, it's lovely when they feel, okay, I'm not alone. You know? And you don't even need to do it in person. You could be a username on a on a website to feel those same feelings, right? Mm. It, yes. It's a safe. There's different ways of doing it yeah. as long as you don't feel alone. That's very important. Ask everyone this question. I'm gonna ask you the question. What's your message to the world? Hmm. What's my message to the world? I have all of these different messages that are scanning through my head. Well, one of them. It's an easy one. There's always another side to the story. Mm. I think it's very important. And I think it reflects a lot of things. It's one of the things that crossed my mind. Was there a certain story that came to mind when you said that? 
No, but I realize that we judge very quickly until, like, let's say you came today uh, half an hour late. I'm like, what is this fucking guest? He has no respect for us, blah, 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 and all of this, right? I'm uh, judging, pre 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 prejudice, da, 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 da. and then you come in like, bro, I'm really sorry. My, my parent was uh, admitted to hospital. I had to call. Now I'm not upset anymore. Okay, half an hour ago, I was making fun of you and swearing, cursing. Yeah. There's another perspective to anything. So I, I really like this. And another message that I think is very important is, uh, I think it was an uncle of mine. I have to translate the word um, if possible. So he, he's an interesting guy, very educated, right? So I think I was watching him and he was, he was sitting in a setting and somebody was talking to him and he, this person was throwing theories at him. He's like, you know, da -da 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 -da, this happened. And he's like, possible. And he's like, you know also, da -da -da -da. and he's like, possible. Everything he would respond, not with a yes or no. So when I'd say, aliens uh, exist, and you just say, possible. And you say, aliens don't exist. You say, yeah, possible. <laughs> Because there is a point, at least a point one percent or point zero zero. We don't know shit. We are so arrogant to think we know it all. Mm -hmm. We're so limited. Do you see Bluetooth? No. Do you see infrared? No. Do we see X-rays? No. So how? It's all over. It's Wi-Fi is here. Okay. We don't see. We're so limited in our skill set and capabilities, right. but we think we are. Our ego is so big on this earth that we think we're everything. There is so much we don't know. So if you approach life with the word possible you're not so defensive on everything. No, this is the, my theory is right. It's just a theory. It might it's be possible. wrong. I love that. Yeah, I, I really like that stuck with me. That's gonna stick with, that one was gonna stick with me too. Yeah, it makes you open. Mm -hmm. If I tell you Americans are the best at basketball, you're like, yeah, possible. I'm like, oh, Russians are the best at basketball, yeah, possible. You look at the stats, yeah, maybe you could say this the last five years yes. they were the best, sure. But it's a nice way. Absolutely. You know, you're not, Defensive, so yeah. Now you're switching the interview, so we need to shut up. I need to shut up. <laughs> He's doing his part. You know, one thing I forgot a few times that it crossed my mind, and I wanted to tell you: watching your videos. Of course, it's your energy when you approach people. It's your voice. You have such a unique, peaceful voice. That's wild. You say that because about ninety seconds ago, I was thinking you have a great voice for this when you were speaking. Mm. You have a very calming voice, very listening voice. Thank you. They, literally less than two minutes ago, I thought that exact thought about you. That's very weird. You I say think that. your voice suits your trait, uh, your trade. Yes, if we call it. Mine, suits. like we are lucky. Our voices fit our mission. And it's not something you would think when you started, but people no, have said it or, at all. Yeah. I just did it, but people are like, oh, you have a radio voice. Oh, you have a calm voice. I'm like, oh, okay, nice. But you're, like, I watched today all your pinned videos. Okay. Because I'm like, if he pinned them, he wants us to look at them. Okay. Yes. And I'm like, what's the common denominator? Why are people not, like, standoffish? It's obviously your energy because I'm not there. But the one I can judge is your voice. And I, I was listening to how you say things. Hey, how are you doing? Like, you have a certain... I don't know how to... I think you know what I mean. Yeah, I've been told that before. Yeah. But didn't know that until it's like, like a white flag kind of voice like i'm not here I'm, yeah I'm, I'm safe yeah I'm it's okay yeah absolutely genuine i don't know what it is it's you can't literally dissect it but it's the voice i think it's one of the things thank you <laughs> um where did i reach with you okay how would you like to be remembered Oof, that's a great question Someone who made someone feel better. Hmm. I like that. As some, I always believe in like show, don't tell, like leading by example and just being that person that I wish I had when I was going through it. Hmm. Um, I feel like I am the last few years, living how I want to be remembered. I'm glad. In my professional life. Not in the and personal. In, I'm working on the personal stuff. Yeah, it's okay. But Sometimes the professional needs more time yep. and the personal goes down. Then it does this. Exactly. 
So that's maybe now you can you yep. have the pleasure of focusing. being able to focus on that. Yeah, that's a problem. maybe that's why I was open to this interview too to yeah. speak about that. And it's my job to tell you a few things that hopefully turbocharges you to do certain things. You turbocharge me. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> nice. Um, when you die, who do you think will sit by the by your grave the longest? Obviously, that depends on when I pass. Mm. I don't want my parents to be there. Don't think it's my brother, my partner, Sophia. Mm. Would you like to have kids? Yeah, absolutely. Oh. I Hopefully think in a with few your, years. Yeah, your ethics and values, we need some kids like that. It's really important to leave good people in this earth. You know, it's a legacy. And imagine your son or your daughter continues doing what you're doing. Wow, voluntarily, like without you pushing them. They just yes. love it. Oof, what a message. Absolutely. You know, it continues. But legacy. You, but they don't need to do it in, in my way. Like, there's no... Anyway. Yeah. But your way works also wonders, so they can do it in their Absolutely. twist. Even if my son does the interviews when I'm gone, I'll yeah. be happy. Because the mission is good. Whatever way he wants to be comedic, he can. Whatever. Hmm. If I could take your heart and place it outside, what would Zach's heart tell you? He's working on loving himself as much as he loves strangers. As much as he loves? Strangers. Hmm. Yes. I love humans and I love people and I not what I said. I think people are good and I know one's bad. But I'm just too hypercritical on myself. Hmm. And sometimes, like you said with my brother, maybe the hypercriticalness comes from like freezing and not taking action and creating movement, but that hypercriticalness has been my pitfall. For me or for people that are really close. And I don't just want to work on that. Hmm. And this is like the time of my life where I feel like I can. And you will. I am hypercharged. Um, last one. Zach in one word. Happy. Mm. Are you? Yeah? Overall, yeah. How much out of 10? Before this conversation, a 10. Probably an 8, realistically. Mm. And what can make it 8.5, other than your brother? Um, making more time for the meaningful relationships in my life or prioritizing mm. my partner more or my, my making time with my parents. Just the meaningful ones. Like, like, it sounds like I'm beating a dead horse, but less focusing on my career or helping people in, in life and at work, but in actually the people in my small circle, focusing more on strengthening and bettering that by being vulnerable, making the time and I really thought that was amazing that you said that you make sure with your travel or your trips that you're home on Sundays. I try. Obviously, things and come up. And I learned up, it from my mother. And that's what I was going to tell you. Build rituals. Rituals are important. Once a year, twice a year, whatever. A Zoom call, ritual, whatever. It's mm -hmm. something. It's a ritual. And human beings, we like rituals. Absolutely. You know? And I, I wanted to say this a few times and I forgot. From now on, now on, I'm a WhatsApp message away. I appreciate so it's that. It's not a camera thing. Thank you, man. It's just me and you. You want to chat to your brother from Dubai, somewhere far, you should call me. Sounds good to me, man. Vice versa. Appreciate it. Love Thank you, man. You. Thank you. Me too. Love you too. Thank you.
This is nice. You good? I was good. Yeah. I you enjoyed it? That. Yeah, I did. We did 130 something. How long were we there? 130 something, I think. Oh, snap. That long? I yeah. thought it was like 50 minutes. <laughs> no, no. No. Well, it's really interesting, man. It's really interesting for me to see how much pain is inside and how much pain can transform to beautiful gestures mm -hmm. to the world. Like from, you know, when they say from darkness comes light or from pain comes pleasure or yep. beauty, there is a lot of beauty when, if you use pain correctly. 100%. You know, if you don't, not a pessimistic person or victimizing, like, yeah, I can't believe this happened to me. No, but you, you can. But if you turn it into. Yeah. If you switch it. Absolutely. You become so empathetic, so giving, you know? I love that when people can do that.